so Nick in the last section we've uh, decided to get you, give you more length and what we've done is we've taken the shoulder movement as the start of the swing and Nick did the carpet beating drill now along the way he didn't realize that his hands had to be active through the hitting area and what I love it and Nick you can see this if you look at the dispersion circles on the left hand side this the yellow circle is your six arm warm-up shots the red circle is you hitting your first carpet beating shots and then I also get faster and that's why the blue circle has got more length to it because your hands work up so the next stage Nick's got shoulder turn going he's got his Y shape going back and his Y shape going through with the hands working fast we're now going to let the swing increase and to do that Nick you're going to allow your forearms to just rotate a little bit so that will take you from half a swing to a three-quarter ish swing so we've added another element of power for you but the key net uh, you keep the idea that once you've made that backswing, it's the hands as fast as you can use them. Okay, so. So Nick, basically you're gonna go, uh, the Y shape is gonna be there, but with a little bit of forearm rotation. It's gonna be a three quarter swing, okay. and you're gonna release the right hand at the club head as fast as you dare. Very good. Now, one of the things I tell all my pupils, when you create power by stretching a catapult, it doesn't matter how slowly you stretch it, it releases at full speed. So, Nick, the same for you. Even if the Y shape is deliberate, okay. it doesn't stop your hands being quick. Okay. Okay, so load, load fully and fire the Y shape. Very good. And you've done ever so well there because your swing length has started to increase. Okay, so the big change there. He's got mass from the core muscles, and now he's got forearm speed, which is great. Okay. Right. Okay, Nick. So you. you You've done very well, and we didn't even put you an explainer, but you understood. And I'm not obliged to use explainer. I use it when a pupil can't get the feel. But you got the feel without the explainer. Now, again, if we just turn to look at the grouping, Simon, on the left-hand side, it's the same club. And can you see what's happened? The white circle was the last little batch of golf balls that Nick hit. And they've gone further. But amazingly, the grouping has reduced by some 40 to 50 percent. It's quite dramatic. So you're getting the idea? The longer you hit it, the stronger you hit it, the more accurate you become. Your strongest shots are your most accurate. So Nick, what do you think about that? No, it's impressive, especially yeah. with a three-quarter swing. Yeah. So let's just uh, look at the stats and find out now. You actually flew that 164 yards through the air the last shot, and the, the three shots you hit were 154 on average. That's a 17-yard pickup. Okay, so we've gained, we've gained distance for Nick because he's got the Y shape working, but he's added in hand speed. So Nick, that's really very, very good. So being a star pupil, we can go to our next lesson, would you believe? Well, let's just hit a couple more like that to prove the point. So you've gone from half a swing to a three-quarter swing because the forearms are now allowed to work with the hands. Right, so load deliberate Nick and kill it. Okay, so again, a really good long shot. Hit one more for me. So do you have to consciously think about this body in the gel swing? Or Not at all, it? no. It, it, will, it will work it ahead of the hands, okay? You load the shoulders, but you fire the hands. A little bit heavy, but again, accurate with draw spin. Okay. So now Nick has gone from a half swing with the shoulders to add the form of taking. He's got a three quarter swing. Now, the pattern in Nick's movement, he's hit everything with draw spin, which is a lovely thing. But it's quite a low flight, and again, you'll see a correlation. The white shots that Nick hit harder have gone higher. Now, Nick, the missing bit. You gave me the carpet beating drill, you give me forearms. 
the last little bit is what is called wrist hinge or wrist cock. So what Nick's going to do now, he's going to do everything he's done, he's going to be wrist cock here and release the wrist on the way through. How do you feel about using the wrists in the swing? Yeah, I'm always a little bit reluctant with wrist action in the swing. And I think it dates back to a problem I had when I was a younger golfer. And I always associated excess wrist action with shanking. Yeah. And so it tends to come back and haunt me every so often. Yeah. Um, so when you associate the hinging of the wrists with the shank, you're reluctant to kind of let them go. And so it's something I've always battled with. So yeah. I'm, I'm looking forward to this part of the lesson. Well, it's the, it's the unmentioned word, the shank, or the, the Chinese hook. When you hit the ball out of the hosel, they say that it's mental. Well, it's not true. The first shank is physical. It's the second shot that's mental. It gets in your head. But uh, if I just take this simple picture of a fence post and a hammer, that is a blow in plane. Okay, if I turn sideways to the camera, you can see the arc. Now, this is in plane with no wrists. This is in plane with wrists. Can you see the extra wrist hinge there? That is faster, but you see, it's still in the plane. So Nick, when you make your move with the power roller, your wrists are going to be hinging within the plane. Um, a lot of people confuse wrists with forearms. Oh, I'm rolling my wrist. No, you're not. That's rolling the forearms. Wrist cock is this, wrist hinge. So what I hope I've shown you is that wrist hinge is as accurate as non-wristy, but it will make Nick, it make Nick hit the ball higher if it hits that higher, it will stay in there longer and go further. And again, as he gets more creative with the wrists, the ball would be hit into a tighter dispersion. All right, Nick, let's give you that feeling with the explainer. That's good. Go down the handle. Beautiful. So for you, this will feel quite dramatic because mm -hmm. the moment you should turn your shoulder, your wrists are going to cock to 90 degrees. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then particularly on the way through, it's not a roll, it's a re-hinge. Okay, so folks at home, if you've got a flag left, a water left, the way we deal with it is with wrist hinge on the through swing as well as the back swing. So off you go, Nick. Hinge the wrists and through and again and through. Very good. So go one more for me. Come to, come to the stop. Just freshen up your posture and your grip. Just, just gain it. That's lovely. So we're going to swing to the top and hold. So blend shoulder and wrist. Hold. I love it. Now pure right hand rehinge. Very good. I think you can see the speed. You can hear it, Nick. That's great. Just a couple more. Okay. Back and stop. Yeah. Shoulder and wrist. Hold. See. We can see that Nick has turned his shoulder and his wrist hinge is perfectly in plane. Fire the right hand. Very good. All right, Nick. That's excellent. So only a few minutes in explainer. We've soaked his wrist in WD-40. Let's see what happens with the ball. Okay, Nick. So we're going to go to a full swing now. Full swing? Yeah. And you're going to, uh, you're allowed to use your, that's right, just move the ball there. Great. So it's a full swing, Nick, but I want you to hit it high. Good. Wow, I loved it. Very good. Now you're pleased. I'm not quite, I know there's more to come. There's another 15, 20% here. It's not gonna come out today, but certainly if Nick sticks to it over the winter, it definitely will. All right, well well done. It's still a little bit lethargic. I can, yeah. I can still sense it from the first explainer. You can feel it, yeah. Uh, session we had. All right. Okay, so we're loading fully. And we're hitting the ball as high as we can with the right hand. Very good. Yeah, a little bit late with the right hand. All right, Nick, come on now. Star pupil, you're going to hit me a high shot, which you just done twice, with a little bit more draw. Come on now. Load fully, release that right hand. Tremendous. Okay, so the three shots you've just hit, that went the furthest. Again, very, very accurate. There we go. So let's just look at the stats on that. So folks, yeah, if you step back, Nick, Simon, can you go in there and have a look for me on the, on the, on the dispersion? 
I can't really give you a better example of that, okay? So I took Nick from half a swing to a three-quarter swing, and the final bit was to add the wrist hinge in. You can see from the vapor trail the ball goes higher. That indicates wrist hinge. It indicates more speed. So there's a link between low and high in terms of accuracy in flight. But let's go back to our dispersion. We started with a full six iron earlier, and that was dispersion, and just a few shots practice with a bit of help from explainer, the dispersion has got tighter. So if you look at the stats on the last three shots that Nick hit, he was averaging 176 through the air. All right, That's a long way for six iron, and it's 15 yards up on what he was doing just a little, little while ago. So Nick, how do you feel about that? That's incredible. I, it, the, the speed of the change is the most miraculous thing. Yeah. And, you know, I've always associated sort of hand speed through impact is a little bit risky and, yeah. you know, a little bit, uh, you know, of a risk of bringing a, maybe a shank into play for me. Yeah. Um, and so to be able to sort of freely release the wrists and hands like that and, and see the ball fly that high and that long, it's incredible. Great. Okay. Well, the proof of the pudding was in the eating. Simon's very honest camera and he'll tell you as we haven't cheated or, or changed. We've just gone right through as a normal lesson would be. And Nick, let's just show the folks at home that last shot. So if you just step back and I'll replay the last shot. So this is the third. There's the grouping. Okay, but have a look at this particular shot. Okay. Lovely and high, high soft draw, the carry time considerably further, through the air, 180 yards. I think Nick's done a great job there. He's picked it up really quickly. But can we imagine that if he spends a winter doing this, just once or twice a week at the driving range, he's going to see this huge change. He's going to be long with his irons, but what I've proved to you is that length gives creativity and length gives you accuracy. Who'd have thought it?